Alright, so now to the second part of the video, we'll be looking into this uh, right side of, of the screen where you know you have all these uh, different tools. Uh, Alright, so firstly we'll start with this histogram. So the histogram is just uh, basically a graph to show you the colors that are, are currently inside uh, of your file, inside of your picture. And um, a side note, if you want to edit uh, photos, right? It is better to edit it in terms of um, the raw file format because a raw file format, uh, when it comes from the camera, uh, so basically, you, let's say for example, you shoot uh, a picture using your camera, and then if you set your camera to um, the, the raw file format, all of the camera sensors, all the camera um, adjustments, settings, and all that will not be taken into considering uh, into consideration when you are uh, taking uh, the a specific picture like this one. So, on on a short uh, summary, a raw file is basically a minimally processed uh, data picture or image. Therefore. Once you have uploaded it onto your PC or you want to view it uh, on your screen or onto any other devices such as your phone or your tablet, then these pictures won't be altered as much uh, compared to a, a JPEG file, uh, for example, because like I've mentioned before, the camera sensors do not make any adjustments and they just take the picture the way it is and once they have transferred into a device um, there will be no adjustments whatsoever because it is like in the name uh, raw file so it comes the way it is there will be no alterations no adjustments so you get uh, perfectly high quality pictures where you can you know in an editing uh, software you can alter the the colors the exposures contrast highlights and so forth Alright, so moving on. So all these tools here, um, so let's say we take one tool, for example, red eye. Red eye is used for uh, a specific type of picture, such as a portrait. Uh, it's just used to fix uh, and, and a mistake, an error. For In this case, it says unable to find red eye because this is a specific scenery um, so that you know there's not really an error on, on the, the picture itself. So then there's this uh, crop overlay, you can um, adjust that uh, picture where you just want to edit this part, so we're not going to do that but that's just an example. Uh, you can also use the command Z uh, tool where you know you can just uh, go back and do whatever you've, you've uh, just done. And then there's this uh, graduated filter. So this graduated filter, let's say you want to edit just one part or one um, bit of the picture. So let's say I've highlighted this far part where it's blurred. So I can just adjust it, you know, make it darker or you know, um, increase or darken the highlights, um, increase all the blacks in the pictures. So all that. So that's a, a pretty neat tool to use. And then all these others are like temperature, either you want it warmer or you want it cooler. So you can undo that graduated filter first. And then you can adjust this uh, in terms of the color itself. So temperature wise, warm, cool. So whichever, like I said before, whichever um, editing uh, skills that you have it's all up to preference it's all up to style therefore I won't be going too deep into how to edit a picture but rather than I'll just show you the tools that are available here in Lightroom Classic alright so and then there's a tint the tint is just basically uh, a, a tool to use um, when you want to just just change the colors a bit uh, and all that, so we'll be undoing that. Uh, go back to the natural picture, and then there's the presence. So presence here, uh, as you can see, texture. Pretty much, you can see the difference here. If you increase the texture, you can see a lot of the details, and this is why um, the importance of 
having a raw file is um, comes comes into place because this is when you can edit your picture much better much more technical compared to having a JPEG file a JPEG file is a file format in which the camera sensors have put their settings in and once you've transferred into a tablet or any devices the, the uh, picture itself will be altered, will be adjusted therefore you can't really edit it in terms of the, the um, technical part so if this was a JPEG picture um, the quality wouldn't be as high as a raw uh, file so you're going to put that back to zero and then there's clarity um, to basically it's similar to texture but this is to sharpen it or to make it look better so as you can see this is not so clear and as you move towards the line this is much clearer much um, more detailed so we'll go back to zero and then there's dehaze dehaze is basically you know any any exposure that's a little bit too much for the picture you might want to decrease that so you can get the, the pure true color of your subject or you know if you want to make it like a classic picture then you know this and that but then again uh, your editing uh, style and then vibrance um, which literally means uh, colors so vibrance you know uh, this is not so vibrant meaning it's not so colorful as you move towards the line this is so very colorful so the yellow is very overpowering and so forth all right so that's the main uh, tools here and here you have the tone curve uh, the tone curve here um, as I mentioned before earlier in the video the difference between Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic is that Lightroom Classic is much more technical compared to Lightroom CC Lightroom CC is modernized much more simple to just edit uh, your picture uh, instantly whereas Lightroom Classic here um, they have much technical tools so as you can see here the tone curve uh, it's reflected in what you have here on the histogram and this is basically how uh, the pictures are so if you were to move this curve then it will adjust uh, whichever you want or uh, a specific part of the picture so like shadows and then if you go up then whiter if you go bottom it will be darker and so forth Alright, so once you have this, you can adjust uh, how the, the, the graph will be if you want to set it much lower towards the darker side or back to, to the balanced um, histogram. So we're not going to do that, but we'll, we'll see if we can adjust this just to show you an example. Alright, see? Uh, you can see that the highlight is much brighter now it's much darker so this this is good for you know if you have a specific issue that you want to tackle uh, in terms of the the colors in the picture or the highlights or the shadows then this tone curve is a very powerful tool because it can fix um, different parts of the picture individually based on the histogram that is available here and then there's a HSL color HSL color is much um, more specific so let's say hue the hue is just the outside part basically just a shade so you want it to be red okay that's cool that's it anything that's close to red it will be much uh, saturated much more vibrant and then there's the aqua part you know anything that's close to aqua they will be adjusted so like as you can see here this part here keep it close eye here once I've adjusted it it turns to a different shade, brighter, darker, brighter, darker, uh, and so forth. So this is that, and then this saturation, saturation here, you know, is in terms of uh, the the heat or the the coolness of the picture. So you want it to be cooler. So you bring it down the saturation of blue, and then bring down the the heat, uh, or sorry, the primary colors like orange, red yellow so you make it cooler or darker or whichever preference that you you have according to your style so that's all that 
and then to get even more technical there's all these other tools like split toning um, where you know you you select like a specific part of the picture and then just split tone it which you know I wouldn't recommend at first but uh, if you are looking to discover then go ahead um, the the basically the creativity is all yours all right so now we're gonna go back split toning close that and all these other effects such as uh, greening like I've explained uh, before you know if you want to add a bits of some bits of dots to make it look like as if it's um, developed from a photography camera uh, then you can go ahead and do that mm, vignetting the outside part where you know you have um, an effect where it focuses on the main subject of the picture but in this case I'm mm, not really we don't need that and all and so forth so you know calibration you want it to be darker blue or whatever calibration literally means that you are fixing something adjusting something uh, so yeah that's that's all the technical part of the picture this is basic and the basic is up here once you've closed the basic these are all the other details that you might want to use but for beginner wise mm, I feel that you should just explore the basic you can explore these uh, you know just just to to see how they function and how they work according to different pictures and so forth all right so now I'll be uh, showing you my editing style um, using this picture so yeah uh, we'll be fast forwarding this video so tune in Alright, so this is uh, after a quick uh, 5 minute edit, this is what I have. Um, so basically I tried to bring out the, the colors um, for this uh, specific picture. So as you can see this is uh, 
I've turned it into a much brighter picture um, in terms of the sky, in terms of the leaf color because this would be the original picture and now once we look at Lightroom this is what we have alright so that's it for today's tutorial um, basically Lightroom Classic is a good way to get into uh, the, the Adobe Lightroom um, software itself uh, but it just requires a little bit more work, a little bit more technicality and you know with good understanding and good uh, motivation to go into it um, I'm pretty sure all of you can grasp it, uh, grasp the concept and idea uh, pretty quick Alright, until then, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Don't forget to like, subscribe and thank you all for watching See you again